Today is Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. Here's a little taste of what's coming up on the mayor's office. 15 years, you had an adrenaline rush that yeah. is unmatched, and you have to find something. You'll never, you'll never replace it, dude. There's nothing like it. You can't. What else are you gonna bring 50,000 50, people to their feet? Never. When else are you gonna? When else are you gonna feel the rush of like, you know, driving in a uh, winning walk-off hit? I can't imagine. No, never. Or Homer in the World Series, or all these things. Like I'm just saying, when you're at that level of like. When you can get that adrenaline rush at a, at a different level, it's almost like a drug. Yeah. You'll never, I don't care what profession you're in, you'll never get that again. Never, Have never. Have you ever felt any feeling like when you hit your home run in the World Series in your life? Probably no. Nothing. Nothing no. Close. <laughs> and I'm in love with this good life. Coming in hot, Chichi. What's going on, brother? Coming in hot, man. Dude. The bringer of rain. He brought rain one more time. <laughs> Raining outside. <laughs> Thanks to go, Josh dude. for coming on with us, man. That was really freaking yeah. cool. Oh, that was cool. really Yeah, it was really cool. I was talking to him, I texted with him yesterday a little bit, and it was cool for him to have a platform to really like, you know, sometimes you get interviewed by people and you can't really say what you want to say. Yeah. But you know, it's, it was nice to him for him to have a platform. We appreciate him, uh, you know, doing it on the in the mayor's office, which was really cool. Absolutely, it, it did make me make me think though, Chinch, like seeing Jason Kelsey retire yesterday too, and oh, how that, emotional how emotional he was. Uh, him and his brother, that was that was adorable, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. Two big grown uh, men crying is a very is a very yeah. emotional thing. <laughs> yeah, and you, you saw Donaldson too at the end start to get choked up on our show too. A couple times, I think he got choked up. Yeah, the end. Um, the end of the show. His his rant. He he spoke for two minutes about his friends and his the teammates and everything about it. I I, yeah. I looked at it today. I was like, wow, that's deep, man. It was really good, man. It was really good. Um, but dude, it, it made it made me think. It like brought me back to when I retired in um. After the 2008 season, I can remember, you know, being sure that I was okay. I'm, you know, I'm, I was, re I'm kind of like Josh Donaldson. I was ready to be home. I had three young kids at the time. Was really kind of done with the, you know, with the travel. You know, I've been doing it for 15 years now. Two and a half in the minors, three in the minors, 12 in the big leagues. Yeah. And uh, I just remember, dude. It, it, it's a crazy thing, you know. I, I almost, I almost, uh, I almost think they need a support group, and I think they do have sometimes. But like when the light, there's a book called "When the Lights Go when Out." The lights go out. I know that. Yeah. Yeah, and and it it's true, dude. Like I remember when I decided I was done. I remember standing in my living room, bro, and looking up at the TV, and on ESPN, it came up on the on the on the the ticker at the bottom. It said, three-time All Star Sean Casey." Um, retires after 12 seasons in the major leagues. And it went on by. And I remember standing, I was like 11 o'clock in the, in the morning, dude, I, day after I announced it. And I remember looking up at that, and it just went on by. And I remember thinking, that's it. That's it, dude. Like all that hard work, all those routines, all the stuff, yeah. every year, all the things you do. And then you're like, man, it's over. You know what I mean? And so, you know, I, I honestly think, you know, with, with – like Josh talking about, you know, he wants to golf and he wants to, you know, do all that stuff and be with his family and stuff. Like for all of us that are in that industry that retire eventually, you know, finding a new routine. You got to replace, and, you gotta replace the adrenaline. Replace the adrenaline. Yeah. You, for 15 years, you had an adrenaline rush that is yeah. unmatched and you have to find something. You'll never, you'll never replace it, dude. There's nothing like it. You can't, what else are you going to bring 50,000 50, people to their feet? Never. I when can't. else are you gonna? When else are you gonna feel the rush of like, you know, driving in a uh, winning walk off hit? I can't imagine. You know, never or Homer in the World Series or all these things. Like you know, what I mean, so that's what I mean. Like, there's definitely something about that. Like, as far as like, sometimes you chase that adrenaline, and that's not a healthy place to be either. You know, there's there's a lot of different things. Yeah, so that's true. You know, I think a, the biggest thing biggest thing is you know you try to lean into your family. But, you know, I know for me, my faith was a big part just because, like, you know, you're trying to just have what's what's the purpose now? The purpose for all those years was to go entertain fans 
or to have an impact on people or really at another level. Well, now you can still have an impact on people, but you don't have that same audience. No, you don't have the same audience, dude. No. You don't have a, that same rock too. So I don't know. It, it just made me think back. And obviously you get acclimated and it is a wonderful thing. And the, you know, the fact that you don't have to perform every night in the entertainment industry and hear the naysayers all the time, you know, people right. yelling at you sometimes out of the crowd, the visiting fans, you know, th that's a good thing. But I must admit, like, I, you know, for, for Josh, congrats on an incredible, you know, incredible run, incredible through the ups and the downs. Like when he said he got sent down five times in the minors, didn't really start to feel his swing to like, he he was in the big leagues with Oakland, like late started 20s, the early thirties. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like he was a late bloomer, dude, and kind of figured it out and became one of the best players in baseball. Yeah, you know, on a much lesser, l lower level, but I I'll never forget it. I was thirteen. I was thinking about this day. My brother was nineteen. He was a sophomore. My brother was so fast, dude. He ran a sub three seven to first, which is like Mickey Mouse style. Well, He's the incredible. leadoff hitter. And his sophomore year, he he uh, slid late into second base, blew his leg out. He he was done. He was done with baseball. And I'll, I'll never forget him. You know, he's got like this big brace on his knee the, the, the next day. And I'm looking at him and he's like, uh, he's like, dude, my whole life, my identity has been, I've been a baseball player. And right. he was 19 at the time. And he's like, who am I now? Like, what am I? Like, right. well, I, I always robbed the baseball player. And now I'm just right. wrong. And, and to your point, like I'll, that affected me. And then when I graduated college, I'll never forget my last at bat. My whole team stood and clapped the entire at bat. And all I was trying to do was not cry because I knew I wasn't playing in the big leagues. And I was like, holy crap. Lucky for me, like getting like I never felt that kind of that kind of feeling again until I was at actually at MLB Network. And we would do those late night back in the day, those four and a half hour MLB nights live where where things are happening and i was i could try to pull that adrenaline back and i just and finally i was like oh i kind of feel that energy that i had as a baseball player because it just stops stops right. the tracks yeah. and now you're like you're standing yeah. you got 15 bats in your house you're probably walking around your house with a bat like <laughs> i do years, i actually do oh, sometimes you still do now yeah anyway so it, it was really cool and i'm glad thanks for sharing that man because i i can only imagine what it's like when you're done playing pro ball you you're in your late yeah. 30 you're in your mid to late 30s and you're like for 30 something years i had to go to the, i would go to the cage today what am i going to do today right that's what i mean dude it's a whole new life yeah. like you know you're like oh my god like what yeah i, I usually like the routine was lifting weights go yeah. to the cages working on your craft looking at video i mean just just so many your, your routines so different and, and it's not like that you know obviously obviously other people when they when they you know even for you chinch when you chin, transition to a new job it's never easy i'm just saying when you're at that level of like when you can get that adrenaline rush at a, at a different <laughs> level it's almost like a drug yeah. you'll never i don't care what profession you're, you're, you'll never get that again never Have never you ever felt any feeling like when you hit a home run in a world series in your life probably no not. nothing no else. <laughs> no you know the, the the birth of your kids is probably the closest thing you know yeah. obviously that's probably number one but that's but the big the it, you're talking about in your profession no yeah. probably not oh that's unbelievable all right well there's a bunch of guys it's cool we we came on we didn't talk before the show and then we had we're on the same page with what we want to talk about today because there's a there's a lot of dudes raking in spring training man first yeah. of all we'll start with the, the, the two big guys like Shohei Otani's hitting like 750 Juan Soto has three he has three home runs in nine at bats <laughs> with seven RBIs and they're all bombs. Um, but there's other guys we're watching. We're like, Hey, they're having a really good spring. This is good for these young, a lot of young guys too. And it's, it's important, right? I mean, oh. it doesn't quote, quote matter. The, the numbers don't matter, but you want to go, you want to be ripping in spring training, especially if you're like 23, 24 years old. Right. Dude, if, if you're a young kid at spring training, you're just looking to impress the brass. You know, the brass is the upper, the GMs, the presidents, the owners, because they're all at the at these games because there's nothing else to do, right? So, like, you just want to get out there. Whether you make the team or not, you want to make an impression like, hey, listen, you now know my name. And because you know my name, you're going to pay attention to me this in the minor leagues. <clears throat> and if I do well, call me up because I'm leaving an impression here at Big League Camp. And that's what these guys are doing. There's one guy that I love, dude, and I think this kid is a stud. As a matter of fact, he was the fourth pick of the draft. If you go back to last year's draft, Paul Skeens went one, right? It was between him and Dylan Cruz. Right. Everyone's like, Dylan Cruz out of LSU. 
And then also Skeens went one to the Pirates, cruised two to the Nationals. The number four pick might be, I think, might be the best hitter in this draft, bro. His name is Wyatt Langford. This kid is out of Florida. This kid's an absolute stud. Scouting grades, which is which is a 60 hit, which is 60 out of 80. That's elite. Yeah. The, the scales on a, on a range to 80 is the top. He has a 70 power, wow. right, which is incredible. So you go back and even look at his numbers, dude. He had a he had a monster year in the minor leagues last year. Uh, let me see if I can let me see if I can get it. Go for it. Yeah, he had three sixty last year, dude. Wow. Three sixty, three sixty in forty four games. Three sixty with seventeen doubles, ten bombs, wow. thirty six walks, and thirty four Ks and thirty ribbies. That's legit. At eleven fifty seven OPS, dude. So he just get kept getting called up last year. He played with four different teams. Obviously, A ball, high A, double A, triple A, probably. But look out for this kid. He's raking in spring training. Now he's got three bombs. Wyatt Langford. I got a feeling he's going to be breaking camp with these guys. That's good. That's a good one. I like when you give these nuggets, man. You're becoming like a super like you're like a scout. Yeah. <laughs> hey, another yeah. guy who got I got to give credit to. Uh, Eloy Jimenez from the White Sox. You know, he's been banged up over the years, but he's – I don't remember, like, Jim Tomey saying this guy can hit a baseball, and if Jim Tomey says you can hit a yeah. baseball, you can probably hit a baseball. He's uh, he's 10 for 20 this spring. 10 for is 20. He, yeah. That's good. That's I think the, big, the biggest thing with Eloy is staying healthy, dude. I mean, yeah. you know, he's always – known, we've known he has the talent. He's got ridiculous pop. He's yeah. a huge guy, but, you know, he just can't stay on the field. That's a tough thing to do. So hopefully, hopefully this is the gear he, he stays on the field. I agree. Um, one of the guys we talked about the other day, who I want to talk about again, is James Wood. Yeah, who was the who was the big prospect in the Juan Soto trade when uh, you know all those guys went uh, to the to the uh, Nationals um, mm -hmm. for Soto. James Wood. I mean, no, from the Padres. Padres. Right, right, Padres. Sorry. Yep. Back from the Padres. James Wood was the guy. He's mm -hmm. got three bombs, dude. Elite power. This guy's got big time power. Six, seven big kids. So he might he might go north with the Nationals too. They might. They're in a. The Nationals are in a position to let their sub Stu. The <laughs> Nationals are in a position to you know let guys develop. So uh, it'd be crazy maybe not to let James Wood come up and like maybe develop at the big league level. I love it, man. Um, yeah. One other guy too. You, we were talking about was Colton Cowser. It was the number 19 prospect in the game. And for all the guys that are doing about to do their fantasy baseball drafts, this is a good thing to kind of lean into some of these guys is, uh, you know, he, you know, we all know Jackson holiday. We all know, uh, you know, some of the big young prospects that they have, but this kid right here can hit man. Colton Cowers. He's got three bombs already. He's making an impression too at spring training. So, you know, it's fun, especially, like I said, the people that are, I'm getting texts all the time, you know, so if I, I don't know if people think I'm the expert, but my buddies are like, dude, my one friend's like, dude, my, my son's starting his fantasy baseball draft. <laughs> Can you send me a couple of sleepers? So I, you know, put a couple about Wyatt Langford's one of the guys I put out there is like, Good. this might be the guy. Yeah. You've been, you've been locked in on the, you've, you've made a couple picks for people over the last few years about who to draft in their fantasy leagues. And you actually nail it usually. Yeah. But you yeah. do it from like an actual baseball standpoint. You don't do it from like, and you just you do you do more eye test, Sean Casey. Yeah, test. yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. Well, it's good. It's good to see the eye test sometimes. Here's a question. Okay, okay. I'm getting a lot of this. I see this everywhere. One of the most polarizing uh, draft picks in fantasy baseball this year is um, what's his name, Ellie De La Cruz. Some you know because his ceiling right. is so high. But then the analytics guys, especially the guys, those guys that do the fantasy stuff, they 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 lock in. They work really hard on it, and and they crunch so many numbers. But the numbers guys are like, well, if you take last year, don't you? you he's getting drafted too high. Yeah, it's, you know. So it's an interesting. He's a very polarizing player, and I don't understand why he plays really hard. He's got the greatest skill set maybe in the league right now, other than like yeah. the Tonys and judges. What what do you what do you want from him? Like as in a realistic standpoint, what the what are the improvements you want from from him this year? Uh, consistency, probably. I think you know he started off so hot, kind of really fell off a cliff at some point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Guy's got all the talent in the world, dude. I mean, the one guy that I really believe that could rival Acuna for forty seventy 
is Dela Cruz. Good point. You know what I mean? Like, there's not a lot of guys in the league that have that kind of power speed combo that he has. So, um, you know, I, I really believe when when I look at De La Cruz, man, he is a legit five tool guy, has a can of an arm. You know, is the fastest guy in the big leagues. I mean, he flies. Yeah. I mean, elite, elite, yeah, like elite Deion speed. Deion Sanders style speed. Speeding speed. Yeah, like Deion Sanders, like Usain Bolt speed. Yeah. If he could, if he could hit. But you know, uh, I think people are excited about him because of his tools. But I look at O'Neill Cruz, too, with the Pirates. Everyone's so excited about his tools, how hard he can throw. And then, you know, he really hasn't got off the ground yet as far as, like, the biggest thing with it being in the big leagues, dude, is being consistent. And how do you be consistent? It's mental. So when you struggle, can you bring it back quicker than just letting yourself continue to struggle? You know, that's the biggest thing. So, like, when I look at young guys with great talent that are like kind of up and down, like really the lows are low and the highs are higher. You want to get to the point in your process in the big leagues where your where your highs are high and your and your and your lows are higher. You mm. know what I mean? They're they're higher than they used to be, right? You know what I mean? That's that's where you want to get to. So you have to learn to ride the emotional wave in the big leagues, dude. Yeah. You can't let your your lows be too low. And when you're high, you got to continue to lock in on what you're doing well. What am I doing well right now? I used to write it down. I used to write down, man, I'm locked in right now. Like, what am I doing well? Because what happens is when you're locked in, you don't realize what you're doing well, and you start to hit, you think you can hit everything. You start swinging at everything. Next thing you know, you're struggling. You're like, how did I get here? Well, you forgot what you were doing well. You, 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 you started to think you could hit everything. You expanded the zone, and next thing you know, you're swinging and misses missing up pitches, you're putting balls in play weekly. So there's an art form to the mental side of the game, dude. Like, I can't stand, you know, I can't stand when people are like, hey, the game's 90% mental. Hey, how, how much do you work on your mental game? Zero. Like, it makes no freaking sense, right? How, how often are you in the cages? All the time. Take all the, I'm in the weight room all the time. Take all these grounders, but I suck in the game. Why do you suck in the game? Because mentally, you're not working on your game. You're not working on your craft. You're not reading books you need to do. You're not meditating. You're not slowing the game down. You're not breathing right. You're not living in the moment. You have no awareness of what you're doing. So, like, for me, guys with our talent young players, at the end of the day, you can't teach experience. So you're either going to learn the hard way of, of getting punched in the mouth or you're going to learn from maybe some of the veteran guys or ask the right questions of guys of how you could speed your process along. Well put, man. That was a good one. That was a good one, too. Yeah. So, yeah. You think, so you think uh, Ellie is the fastest guy in baseball? Who's You said the fastest guy you ever saw He's, with Dion. Dion was the fastest guy. And, 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 dude, you know who else? Jacoby Ellsbury. Jacoby oh. Ellsbury. Uh, I, in 2008, I was with Jacoby Ellsbury when he first came up, and I was like, wow. Like, there are certain guys in, in, your, in, in the game that you're like, I want to see him hit a gapper because I, yeah. I want to see him run. Right. Yes, because it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Like Jacoby Ellsbury, dude, back in when I was with him in 08, when he would hit the ball in the gap, I was like, oh man, it was it was like hitting big watching Big Poppy Homer. Mm. Just want to see him run. It was the same thing with Dion. When I played with Dion 01, man, you just want Dion to hit a ball in the gap and just watch him run. I I think I told you that one time. He hit a ball left center at spring training, bro. It's a it's a double for anyone else. I mean, it was like he was running on a cloud. It was like And it was on third. It was like, yeah. how is he standing on third? No play, no throw. Yeah. Not breathing heavy. Not breathing. Yeah, incredible, man. That so dude, it, it, there was a dude. It's uh, fun. Uh, did you see that kid? Xavier Worthy, his name is NFL combine record. Four, two, two, one, four, four two, two, one. That's incredible. That's like, that's like, he, he should be running in a, that's Olympic level. Yeah. Shit. That is that's, that's what, ridiculous. What, what would your 40 time be right now before we go? <laughs> right now, 5'8". That's not too probably. bad. That's not bad. Probably, that probably, I'd be in the five. Yeah, I could, dude, I still I still run sprints on my walks in the morning oh. trying to keep, hey, use it or lose it. Burns is, use it, Eric Burns, <laughs> use it or lose it. You know what I mean? So I, I still try to, they say they say 95% of people at the eight, after the age of 35 will never sprint again. I, I don't see a point to it. I always go back. My dad, every time we drive past somebody jogging, he goes, yeah. you ever see a jogger smiling? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, actually, you never do. You never see somebody like, oh, this is great. They're always like. <laughs> oh, this hurts. This hurts. Oh, your camera died. So I think. Camera you, died. You know, oh, there you are. Oh, there. Oh, oh, now, I'm a, 
Oh, my, well, I'm back. <laughs> He's back. All right. Goodbye. All right, all right brother. <laughs> time to, that means it's time to roll. Yeah, man. All hey, right. Have a I great just time. want to say thanks for everybody for listening. Thanks for listening yesterday to Josh Donaldson. That was a great episode. And, you know, and uh, the more we the more we get that stuff out there, the more we grow. So keep yeah. subscribing, downloading to us. If you're having a good time and you're liking us, pass us on. And Chinchy, man, love you, buddy. Have a great rest of the day. I'll catch you later, man.